Mm. But uh, you know, you're talking to people who have not run this utility properly. You're now expecting them to pull magic out of the air. And I mean, I think it's, it's fallacious. Uh, it, it's, it's naive to think that uh, we've now solved the problems. Yeah. Absolutely not. Okay. So basically what you heard yesterday, do you think it's realistic? I mean, is there any... No. Any opt no, you don't. No. Okay. You cannot... The, what the minister must understand, and I think he's maybe being ill-advised or he, he's learnt the wrong lessons, is that you can't dictate the load shedding uh, levels. That the system will tell you how much you need to load shed. You can dictate until the cows come home. But if the system needs more load shedding to save it, that's what you have to do. So I'm very worried that he's given the instruction to Eskom to cap the load shedding at 1,000 megawatts, uh, or which is stage one. Because if that's indeed the case, and the system's operators need to shed more, and they don't, we will have a grid meltdown. This is serious stuff. In what bad state are these? these In a terrible state. Uh, if I can give you an analogy, it's like buying a car that's marked to go to 100 kilometers an hour. Mudupi cannot, at its best, get to 60 kilometers an hour, and Kusili, at its best, cannot get to 20 kilometers an hour. So would you take delivery of a car that can't perform? Absolutely not. So they are, it's totally abysmal to expect that the, those two power stations is, are going to salvage the day. And that's what they keep on thinking. They say they're going to fix it up, they're going to do this. They don't even know how to fix it up. They messed it up in the first place. To not how many times have you been frustrated because maybe as a resident of this city or even a business owner, you've sat in the dark with no idea when the power is going to come on? Uh, how often have you been frustrated because you can't make plans because power supply cannot be guaranteed? And we call ourselves what? Africa's leading economy? Come on, it's time for us to have a different conversation. ESCOM, as you know, has signed several new contracts with coal suppliers to avoid uh, low shedding as coal stockpiles decline at its power stations. You may have heard of the phrase, the coal cliff. That's something Ted Blom, energy expert and partner at EECO, has been talking about for years now, and it seems we're ever closer to it now. Ted, a very good morning to you and thank you for... When ESCOM tells us it has less than 20 days of coal supply, what does that mean? Good morning, Bob Ronnie. Uh... Well, I'm sad to tell you that uh, that actually means if they say 20 days, it's actually less than 10, because the last 10 days of the stockpile is all rock and ash and uh, waste. So in reality, the, the alarm bells should be ringing. Uh, and the bad news is it's going to be ringing for the next five years, because that's the amount of time it takes to develop a new coal mine. But two things happen. Firstly, there's a lot of money being stolen. And secondly, they use it as an excuse to drive up the price by at least 5%. They say there's no coal, so that means the lights will go out. Absolutely. Uh, they, they're scraping the barrel. They've got a couple of small coal supplies that they can maybe scrape the barrel with. Uh, the fact of the matter is it takes you at least, if you're a coal miner, to deploy a new section uh, which can generate uh, some coal. It takes at least one to two months because you've got to firstly procure the equipment. You've got to procure the labor force uh, uh, over three shifts for every, every new uh, face that you open up. Uh, and then, I mean, uh, you know, the coal's got to be available underground. And the fact of the matter is we've gotten to the stage in the Pumalanga area where the coal's no longer available underground. And this one is self-inflicted nothing to benefit other third parties. That, uh, my contention at the moment, and it's a very dark Just, contention. No, whoa, 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 Ted, that's very big. Whoa, what do you mean? Self-inflicted to benefit whom? Uh, third parties within ESCO. What does that mean? They're people who make money when there's a crisis. I guarantee you that the coal price that this estimate is paying now, today, for this new 1,414 uh, new coal contract, is at least 200 rand a ton premium to the market price. I guarantee you that. That's extraordinary. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm almost not sure how to react to it. So when you say there are people who, who stand to gain when this crisis happens, are you talking about people within the power utility? Are you talking about people who've got business deals with the utility? Who exactly are you referring to? Well, certainly there are uh, some the con uh, connivance of the people inside the utility. And, and uh, as far back as 2006, I've made allegations of uh, staff in the utility getting massive kickbacks from suppliers by uh, ringing the price, uh, the purchase price. And that's probably been ongoing for more than 10 years. But very easy. I mean, the cost of running a diesel uh, uh, setup is seven times higher than the cost of running a coal setup. So while Ethan's running, uh, selling coal uh, generated power by one rand 10 cents a kilowatt hour, 
that, 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 that in effect, if it runs on diesel, it's costing it more than seven rand a kilowatt hour of all in cost. And that's what FM doesn't tell you. They don't work in the all in cost, which includes the logistics and the transport. So, how bad then, if we do get load shedding, is it likely to be? <laughs> well, Brian, it's early in the morning. A lot of people aren't ready for the shock. But this is probably going to be the worst load shedding that you've ever experienced in South Africa. Disaster. The Eskimo has hit the wall. I predicted this in 2013, and we're now facing the reality because of an intransigent government and, and the same to, uh, guys to say about Eskimo management. They just ignore it. I mean, these are the same guys who are spending 500,000 rand a month on their petrol cards.